Hello and welcome back to Dishonored. Uh, this is a pointing episode. It's a little bit of a break from our normal adventure. It's basically where I'm going to be reading off the, date, the database entries, the books and the handwritten notes that we haven't read off yet. Um, these ones are going to be from the Golden Cats area uh, and most of the bridge area. So it'll probably be something like pointing cats and bridges, I guess. Or cats and bridge, cats and bridges. That sounds better. Yeah, so it'll be something like that. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're just basically going to be doing. Obviously, if you don't want to listen to these books, you don't have to. It's going to be like an audio diary format. I'm going to be reading them off. Uh, yeah, that's that. All right then, let's start off with this one then. So this one is Piero's Door to Nowhere. We mentioned it a while ago in the adventures. The door to nowhere has proved to be a safety hazard, but for me this project is an endless source of inspiration. With the proper application of energies, I believe I can transform the door frame into a window of sorts, one that will allow a traveller to cover the distance from my workshop to some distant arbigilatory point in a single step. Currently, this step leads to a sheer drop straight down into the courtyard, but in time it will bridge gaps that will boggle the mind. Such work is many years away, to be sure. But if I survive this plague, I am sure to succeed. So something tells me that's going to happen in story-wise. Right, so the next one is a note. It's PFC, which is Pendleton Family Crisis. Cousin Anna, Morgan and Custis continue to resist my efforts and are no longer responding to my letters. The servants tell me they are being absent from the manor for some weeks. My brothers have always been arrogant, utterly convinced of their own certainty, but they don't really give two figs for anyone else in the world, unless they want something and can't take it outright. But this disagreement over the upcoming parliamentary vote has reached a crisis point. Up till now, the Lord Regent has been somewhat restrained in his authority, at least where the holdings of the gentry have been concerned. If Morgan and Curtis vote in their, his favour, the law will be changed and he will and be at risk aristocracy, aristocracy or not. I implore you, if you know where they are, to speak with them. Lord Trevor Pendleton. Interesting. So the next one's a book. Books. Oh no, don't do that. Because I'm currently in an adventure. Um, powers, notes, Books. Right, so this one we're looking for now is L-I-R-M. L-I-R-M. Looting in recent months will be the one then. Excerpt from a letter found in an empty house at the edge of the Rushaw Financial District. The looting started in the warehouses. Once enough men took sick with a plague, the companies had to suspend operations. My hus... My husband, Malchus, was worth the... Marlston Tobacco Leaf Company, which closed last year during the month of clans. He ran the fireboxes at the main curry barn, curing barn. Malchus always said flu curing made the sweetest loaf leaf. Sickness hit the tobacco men hardest because of all the smoking. They ran with a small crew for a while, but around the time my husband got sick, the fires were put out and the tobacco sat rotting. Somehow the thieves knew and started stripping the place later. They moved on to houses, the buggers. It's hard to do that with that sort of voice. Right, the next one is S T I M N M N M. Sewer capacity in a month of nests. Let's do this then. So, excerpted interview attached to a formal report by City Works Crew 17A. I have been asked to tell the problem, so here it is. It's been every year that we work like men gone mad during the month of nests. I don't hardly see my family as bad enough that the works is clogging with trash from the catch, places of crates and nets, but the water smells of hagfish guts too. We got to get it done before the month of rain, or you know what. And it ain't like we got help from those people in civil engineering either. Been at this job for nigh on 28 years, and I never seen one of them come below except to measure with it. Hold, and they be putting up one of them fancy new bridges. So these last three years been the worst, and here's why. It's the river crusts moved into the works. So hear a man around yell and scream, but he's burning up, and we all climb up fast. No other choice. Interesting. Uh, so W, I, and H. We put identification and handling. Except from a notes by Dr. Galvani on proper procedures for handling those infected with plague. Once a victim bleeds from the eyes, you cannot help them. Death is inevitable. Given our current understanding of the plague, however, by following protocol, we can limit its spread. 
all personal handling weepers, or those in the final stages, must consume liberal amounts of one of the available protective potions. Any of the variations will serve this purpose. Sokolov's elixir or Pietro's remedy. For instance, a dose per day for the enlisted man, a dose twice daily for officers. Distance must be maintained either through the use of pole arms or incendiary ranged weapons in order to avoid the parasitic stinging insects that colonize an infected host. After use, strict washing procedures must be followed with regard to washing the men me metal kernels to transport paddocks and the carriages used to transport the infected to one of those deportation zones, such as the flooded district. I can't wait till we go to that place. Right, next one is Dot. I've had that before, Missing Woman. Missing Woman, have you had that before? So what's one's Dot? Oh yeah, sorry, it's because I had to reload and do it again, so it was a different order. So Dot, daughter of Tivia. Excerpt from a theatre play, young lady Amelia in the back garden. Duchess, I do not know of the world beyond these garden walls, but do not mistake my lack of experience for fear, or for an absence of desire. If I've avoided you, it's because of the warning your name carries. Duchess Kali, bending a rose to her face, inhaling the scent. And what warning is that, my dear Amelia? Young Lady Amelia, turning her back on the Duchess. I believe you know my meaning. Your father's tales are still the subject of para pariah gossip. Duchess Kali, stepping up close. And do those stories excite you? Tell me, girl. I am a friend. Young Lady Amelia, hesitating. Duchess Kali? Ah, uh, yes. I confess they do. In my youth, I hid a copy of the tales of Prince Kalasar. I read them later into the night. Duchess Kali, speaking into her ear. As did I. Young Lady Amelia, leaning back into her embrace. But he was your father? Oh, we got more if that was it. Duchess Kali stroking her neck. They're just stories, Amelia. Fire for the imagination. Young Lady Amelia breathing deeply. Duchess, will you teach me to kiss? Duchess Kalia, coolly soft, cool, cooing softly. I will, but have you never kissed a mother? Another. <laughs> Abri, a rose gardener emerging from the hedges, stammering. M my ladies, I swear to you I did not intend to spy, forgive me, but I, I was pruning the hedge and could not find a way to interrupt. Duchess Carly, extending a hand, we forgive you, but as punishment I command you to stay and to come closer. Young Lady Amelia, shocked, brows furred in irritation, but he is a servant, Duchess. Duchess Carly, pulling at each of them, drawing them close to her, and serve us he will, young Amelia. It's like the lusty Hargodian maid. Right, now we go back to Missing Women, Golden Cat. <clears throat> Excerpt from a crime story revolving around the Golden Cat. Mr. Arrowwolf, what a name. I assure you, my family has the means to pay, and your aristocracies should locate my sister. You've got her name and description and everything else we know about her initial weeks in Dunwall before Patrice stopped writing to me. However, there is one other detail so hard to believe that I was reluctant to mention it. There is an embellishment within Dunwall called the Golden Cat Establishment. A bathhouse, I believe, though some say it is a brothel. I find it implicable that Patrice would ever be connected with such a place, but I would be remiss if I did not pass along the information. Just before her letters stopped coming, and a cousin of an old friend said he saw Patrice performing there, singing and playing the harp. It could be nothing, but please investigate. Lastly, if your search of the city has not <coughs> borne fruit by the month of wind, I will be making the trip from Morley myself in order to retain another agent. Sincerely, Madison Canbright. Okay. Uh, River Cust, Daughter of Tivia. Havelock log entry we've read. The Isle of Morley we haven't read. I haven't, I haven't written some of these down, you see, so I'm going to have to try and read them off now then. All right, so the Isle of Morley, River Cust in Respect Reproduction... That one, that one, that one. Okay, so read those then. That one we got left. We got plenty of time. It's nine eleven, guys. It's a conspiracy. All right, the Isle of Mo the Isle of Morley, except from a volume from a Morley geography and culture. It is said that the history of Morley is as colourful as a quilt made from all the flags ever flown and all the clothes ever worn. The land itself hides from the sun under a layer of cloud, and thick grey moss hangs from the trees. But the spirit of the people who live in Morley dances with the firelight. Among the people, the love of good food and drink is legendary, with stews and roasted meat dishes most often used to fight off the cold and the dreariness. The nation has a rich tradition of poets, musicians and philosophers. 
Even among the poorest folk, intellectual tomes and bar songs alike were often penned in Morley. A late entry into the empire, the Morley insurrection is still a sore spot for many natives, and independence is a proud character trait among the people. I'm trying to work out what the um, island was from the second game, but I can't remember what it was. River Crust Reproduction. Excerpt from a nature journal by Piero Joplin. Curiously, the river crusts possess both male and female anatomical features. One can only imagine what this would mean for human society, were it true among our own species. Would we dispense entirely with courting and dances? Imagine the increase in efficiency, as we all dedicate ourselves to the important matters in life, natural philosophy, of course, but also industry and law. And when aged members of society needed to be produced, replaced by more vigorous younger members, one could simply emerge into the auto-impregnation process and produce the desired offspring. Back to the matter at hand, while any given river crust is fully capable of inseminating itself, it must be... It must also be noted that reproduction does frequently occur between individual crusts. This happens when river crusts live in colonies clustered above and below one another, such as when attached to a wooden dockyard piling. In these cases, as one of the mollusks releases its fluids, they run down across another in the colony, resulting in the intermixing of bloodlines. Oh dear, oh no! Spilt a little bit of tea on the table. Tyrion's Journal. Uh, 26th of day, month of wind, I finally found a new place where I should be able to hide and survive for a long time if I stay quiet. The city watch condemned the building, so the basement should be a safe spot. I have to believe that. 28th, month of wind, everything is going as I expected. The watch patrols the streets nearby, but they never, never enter this building. Food is the only problem, but I managed to seal some during the night. Second day, month of darkness, someone else found this place and wants to share it. He has a strange amulet made of bone, and he claims that it protects him from the plague. We'll see. Perhaps we can help each other, but I'm losing confidence in the odds of survival. Fourth day, month of darkness. Since he arrived, it's been he I've been having bad dreams, and I didn't feel very well. There's There are more and more rats in the building. Soon I won't be able to leave this shack, even if I want to. I'm starting to think that his amulet is cursed. Call to the Fears Part 2. Excerpt from a work of fiction, multiple middle chapters. Orcado was elated, like a boy of sixteen, on the eve of the Fugue Feast. When we are back in Brist Crystal, I'll be named Royal Physician, or you will be burned for heresy, Third perf Prefect. All depends on what we find when we get there. My master's voice was different, as if the air of the outer spheres added qualities normally absent, uncertainty, weakness, fear. I risked another glance at the monolithic structure in the distance. It was a wonder for Okado, a puzzle for Overseer Brian, and for me, a towering monument to emptiness. A magnificent shrine to madness. Court Spheres 3, excerpt from a work of fiction, final chapters. I do not fear the void, nor am I concerned with the spiritual sanctity of the weak, for I am now his herald, his chosen, having seen his sublime vault, where eternity he feeds upon the substance of the void. Alone in Orcado's ship, the floor painted red with life, I draw designs with my fingers and gaze through the portholes at the land rising above. There I will build the final monument to his glory, a rotting wound in the flesh of nature. Patiently, I'll build, awaiting your arrival, O oh, great action, Shin of the Void. How interesting. Right, any more notes that we haven't read? Um, Secret Stash, we've read. Moves and Notes, no, that draws you a note. Have we read that one? Yeah, we've had that one. Uh, card, scoreboard, uh, journal entry, we've read those. My cousin came, but we fought over it. Yeah, I've had that before. Pratchett's reminder. The way the truth starts is the crowded streets. Continue until you see an armored wheel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we've got reopening. Tyrion burial urn. Have we read them before? Oh, yeah, those are all the notice boards on the place. Steam room. Yeah, I've had that before. Smoking room. Oh yeah, this is because I had to reload. Uh, we welcome the Pendleton twins today, and the window of the smoking room is still not repaired. Custis will take this room, so fix it. Uh, I know we're running low on beds, but I must... Okay, it's fine. Alexa delivery, official guard report. Have we read that one before? Um, actually, we haven't read that one. Official guard report. Actually, where's... An ancient note, we've had that before. Bunting, we've had that before. 
Alison's letter. Dear Daniel, I've been given a jolly's position with her. I've heard that before. If you've got a part. I don't think we read this one, though. Let's read this, then. To all watch officers, be aware that Clovering Boulevard, leading to Holder Square, has been sealed until further notice. The office of the High Overseer has entered a state of crisis and all interactions with the Overseers must be coordinated through me, whether previously authorised or not. Former High Overseer Thaddeus Campbell has been branded a heretic, a historic religious event that the Overseers enforce without exception or mercy. Campbell has been stripped of all authority, and anyone offering him aid or shelter is subject to arrest. This includes members of the Watch. First Captain Nathaniel Mortimer, Abbey Liaison. Cool. And that is that. So we'll continue this place in the next adventure. I'll pause it so that we don't obviously spoil it and get ahead of ourselves. But yeah, that is it for this pointy episode. A very short one, actually. I thought it was going to be a very long one. But we'll uh, obviously continue with the story in the next adventure. Uh, but if you're here, I'll say see you later, pointers. Uh, we'll let the rest of the people come back in the next episode. Um, but yeah, that's that. Found out more about the world. Maybe got some little hints about what's going to happen in the future. I still think that Pietro's door thing is going to be a thing. Let's find out what happens then. Right then, I'll see you in the next adventure.